and Ori is a model of the solar system that represents the positions and orbits of the planets. A web search finds images of dozens of different configurations and complexities. An animated Ori has either a crank for manual operation or is motorized to represent the relative orbital periods. It is a scale model in the dimension of time. Animated Ori's typically have a complex stack of precision gears. The Ori in this video has several unique features. For example, all of the gears and structural pieces are made from brass wire. The gears are imprecise and can be made with hand tools. There are no central concentric shafts. The planets ride on large inside diameter gears with a distributed axial bearings. It was intended to be a display and conversation piece, suitable for sitting on a shelf or tabletop or hanging from the wall. It's about 25 inches on a side and 8 inches deep. A stack of 10 concentric primary wire gears provides the animation. Each primary gear represents the orbit of a solar system object. The Sun is at the center, called the axis of rotation. The inner primary gear has a 4 inch inside diameter, a 6 inch outside diameter, and 18 teeth. This gear represents the orbit of Mercury. Each successive primary gear is 2 inches larger in diameter and has 6 more teeth. The outside primary gear has a 22 inch inside diameter, 24 inch outside diameter, and 72 teeth. This gear represents the orbit of Pluto. The gears are spaced one half inch apart along the axis, so the whole stack is four and a half inches deep. The inside of each gear is made from a loop of one eighth inch wire. The teeth are made from a three thirty seconds inch wire bent into a sawtooth shape, each tooth about one inch on an edge. The bottom of each tooth is hard soldered to the wire loop. Each gear is supported by four deep groove idle wheels. These wheels also act as the axle and bearing for the primary gears. The larger primary gears are quite flexible, so the idler wheels are larger and have deeper grooves. The Pluto primary gear required a fifth idler to keep it in contact with the gear that drives it. The innermost primary gear, representing the orbit of Mercury, is driven by a small gear of electric motor with a 5 tooth gear through an 18 tooth idler gear. The motor is hidden inside a 5-inch brass cylinder with a brass end. All of the secondary gear teeth are L-shaped pieces of wire. The long side of the L is soldered to a hub. The short sides of the L's are parallel to the axes and contact the primary gear teeth with sliding motion. There is a compound idler gear that couples the rotation between adjacent primary gears. The first compound idler is driven by the Mercury gear which in turn drives the Venus gear. This inner idler gear has 13 teeth and the short sides of the L's are about 3 8 inch long. This outer idler gear has 7 teeth and the short sides of the L's are about 7 8 inch long. The next compound idler is driven by the Venus gear, which in turn drives the Earth gear. There are nine compound idler gears, the final one driving the Pluto gear. Since there is a six tooth difference between adjacent primary gears, there must also be a six-tooth difference between the idler gears. With this constraint, the gear ratio between adjacent primary gears is determined by the total number of teeth in the idler gears. It is a happy coincidence that the ratio of the periods of adjacent solar objects is very roughly two. This table shows the data used for the design. The first column lists the ten solar system objects modeled. There are eight planets, the dwarf planet Pluto, which was still a planet when the Ori was built, and the asteroids. Including the asteroids enabled more regular gearing since there is a big gap between Mars and Jupiter. The asteroids are represented by an empty primary gear. Pluto is an unusual object because it has the smallest period ratio with the closest inner regular planet, Neptune, only 1.51. Its orbit actually crosses the orbit of Neptune, but that detail is not represented. The second column has the orbit period in Earth days for all of the objects. The third column has the ratio of the periods of adjacent objects. The period of the outer object is divided by the period of the inner object. The fifth column has the ratio of the period of each object to the period of Mercury. The period of Pluto is about a thousand times longer than the period of Mercury. The eighth column has the number of teeth of each primary object gear. All of the values in these columns are fixed by the solar system and the general design concept. 
The model period of each object is determined by the number of teeth in the inner and outer idler gears. These are in the last two columns. Spreadsheet formulas were developed so that setting the number of teeth in the blue column, which is the idler outer gear teeth, determines the values in the four yellow columns. These are the idler inner gear teeth, the total air, the model ratio to mercury, and the model ratio between objects. The best choices for the number of outer gear teeth were determined by trial and error, working from the Venus gear outward. For the Venus idler, manually setting the outer gear for seven teeth made the inner gear have 13 teeth, so the Venus to Mercury model ratio was 2.48, about 3% less than the actual ratio. Selecting six teeth or eight teeth made the error greater. The total error column displays the percent error between the real ratio and the corresponding ratio of the model. This error is the total of the previous errors, so selecting the number of teeth can compensate for previous errors. The smallest outer gear had four teeth, which still produces relatively smooth, continuous rotation. Pluto was a problem because the inner idler needed 22 teeth, and this was too large to fit inside the structure. This was solved by using a third gear with 14 teeth between the primary gear and another compound idler that had 10 and 7 teeth. The Neptune gear drove the 14-tooth gear that drove the 10-tooth gear of the compound gear. Then the seven-tooth gear of the compound gear drove the Pluto gear. This solution is shown in the Pluto alt row. The model ratio is 1.56. All of the model ratios are within 3% of the real ratios, except for the asteroids where the period is not very well defined. Constructing the model was pretty straightforward, but very tedious since there were a lot of jigs, wire parts, and individual solder joints. It took a total of about 200 hours to design and construct. About 400 feet of wire was used, held together by about a thousand solder joints. The only brass-colored solder I could find required a high temperature, about 475 degrees. This was near the limit for a small propane hand torch. This high temperature caused the wire to bend and warp, so it took a lot of hammer and plier work to straighten everything after soldering. It also discolored everything, so it was sandblasted to get back to uniform brass color. A custom jig was built for each gear that held all the wire stable while soldering. There were 22 jigs, each with one to three holes or pins per tooth. Slot car wheel ball bearings were used for all rotating parts. One bearing was pressed fit into each wheel and two for each idler core. A small metal lathe was used to shape the wheels and cores from stock brass rods, three quarters, seven eighths, and one inch in diameter. The position of each rotating part is adjustable. The wire supports have either slots or U-loops at the attachment locations. A weld nut, which is shaped like a top hat, is placed in the back side of the slot. On the front side, a large and small washer are placed on the weld nut. This stack is temporarily held in place with a clamp. A 440 flathead screw is passed through the bearing and screwed into the weld nut. After adjustment, the screw is tightened to fix the position. It took a few hours of tinkering to get the Ori to run reliably for several hours at a time. Pluto has made about 75 rotations so far. Most people who see it find it interesting, but they also wonder what the hell is wrong with me. I guess I'm just easily amused.